Hi lovely people, I have my tea, so let's chat. A lot of people don't know that I am autistic. So then it's the big question. Would I have wanted to have this diagnosis earlier in my life? So I'm sitting here editing this video and I feel like you might need a bit more of an introduction. <laughs> This video that you're about to see is part of a series. I already did two parts of it. So I will make sure to link part one and two for you down in the description box. Because I do kind of recommend maybe watching those first. Actually at first I was filming this as like one big video but it just got way too long so I decided to split it up in three videos. So the one that you're about to watch is part three. Basically. What we're talking about is I am autistic. I got the diagnosis slightly later on in life at I think 24. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about whether or not I would have wanted to have the diagnosis earlier in life or if I'm actually okay with being diagnosed a little bit later. I am going over the pros and the cons of both. So, if that's something that's interesting to you, just keep on watching. Now let's get back to the actual video. So then it's the big question. Would I have wanted to have this diagnosis earlier in my life? The completely honest answer is just I don't know. I don't know if I would have wanted that. I don't know how my life would have been if I did get that diagnosis earlier. I don't know if it would have changed much at all. I do think getting the diagnosis earlier would have made things a lot easier for me like earlier in life. For one, I would have understood certain parts of me sooner, the parts that I am now basically rediscovering, re getting reacquainted with, or actually acquainted with is maybe a better word. I would have been able to do that sooner. I also think that in school things might have been made easier for me in, for example, allowing me to work in spaces, places that are a bit calmer, in an environment with less stimuli because I do get overstimulated pretty easily and a school is not an ideal situation for that. I mean, I know, for example, in, I don't know how that translates to like the overseas school systems, but when I was like, I don't know, eight, ten years old, I was often allowed to work outside of the classroom. We had like a day task and a week task, so a list of things that you needed to get done. And it didn't really matter when you got that done, as long as you did get them done in time. So in the times that we got to work on those tasks, I was often allowed to work outside of the classroom. And I remember actually... <laughs> I don't know how often this happens. I just have memories of me working underneath tables because it was nice and calm there. So I would go and sit underneath a table to work on my tasks, to do my reading, to do my writing. I don't know what I was doing there. But to work on my schoolwork because it was nice and calm. There wasn't as much going on there. I liked working in places like that because there wasn't as much going on and it was much easier to concentrate on the things that I need to concentrate on in those environments. So I think maybe knowing this earlier, I would have been able to do things like that sooner. I've actually been really lucky in both my like primary school situation as in high school, in that they both were fairly free, I guess, in the sense that we just had the things that we needed to get done and we just had blocks of time in which we were free to just work on those tasks so it was easier to really focus in on those things for me and kind of have everything else out just not not there for me <laughs> uh, and work on those things i've been really lucky in that i think it was mostly towards actually art school that I really started to struggle with in the schooling system and looking back at it, it was probably partly because of my autism that it was that difficult for me to really fit into that schooling system. So I've been always really good with rules. Ever since I was small, I love rules. They 
just help me to make sense of the worlds around me that was not always predictable. Rules made that unpredictable world a little bit more predictable. I loved rules. Yes, I was one of those kids. Probably very common in autism. <laughs> and especially in art school when there were not as many rules and there were more free assignments, that's when I really started to struggle. I need to know the guidelines of an assignment in order for it to make work. Also, if a teacher is saying something to me, I expect that they mean that something. There's some frustrations going up here. So at some point I, I had a real fascination with lingerie and with corsets specifically. I think they are so interesting, still do. I think they are a beautifully interesting garment. And I wanted to dive into that a little bit deeper in art school in fashion design, which is the course that I took there. And I did not finish that. Just I did two years of that. And I had a teacher say to me, you can make your courses in your own time, but I don't want to see a single thing about them here anymore. Quite literally, like translated, that's what she said to me. Okay. Did not like hearing that, but if a teacher is saying that to me, I expect that they mean that and that I'm not allowed to use the corsets or working with corsets or those structures in that class. Makes sense, right? If someone's saying that to me. At the end of the class, like the end of the trimester, I guess, like when we got graded on the assignments, she then told me, oh, but you just should have gone into the corsets more. If that's what you wanted to do, you should have pushed through with that. Doesn't make any sense to me. If a teacher tells me, no, don't do that, I'm not going to do that. You literally tell me not to do that. You cannot then expect me to go through and do that. So there's a little of those small things that there were just not very clear guidelines or outlines in assignments that I had a really hard time with. So in the end, I'm perfectly happy that I quit fashion design. <laughs> I don't think it's a world that really suited me that way. I already told in a video before, I don't really care about fashion. I'm more interested in personal style and I, yeah, I don't think fashion design would have really suited me in the end. But there were a lot of those little things in art school that just I really struggled with. If you're saying one thing, I'm, I can't deal with it. If you're then saying the complete opposite to me at another time. If you're telling me to do something, I expect that you mean that I need to do that something. I do need that structure, I guess, for it to make sense. My brain just does not handle it otherwise. Gee, so good. That's when I started to struggle a little bit more with it. It's very windy. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. But like I always said, I do feel like I grew up in a pretty accepting environment, I guess, of just my little traits and my little needs. And I was really encouraged to explore my unique talents, basically. So I am sure that that helps a lot in making me into the person that I am today. There was a lot of freedom there to just explore who I was, who I wanted to be, to explore my unique talents. And I think that is a beautiful thing to be brought up that way. I am so, so grateful for my parents and also, I mean, for my teachers, for my environment in general, that I was able to grow up that way. I think that's helped me so, so much. It still really helps me to this day, I think. So another side of this, of maybe getting the diagnosis earlier, I feel like there is such a stigma around autism. And most people don't really understand what it truly is, what it really means to be autistic, to have autism. So. Somewhere I also wonder that if I would have gotten the diagnosis earlier, if I and my environment would have been 
able to push me as far as they have and I have to reach my goals. So I don't know if I would have been able to push myself as hard as I did to get where I wanted to be. I don't know if just the knowledge of me having autism would have been an obstacle in pushing me to do things that were not comfortable to reach my goals. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> right now, I don't think it really would have been because I still did push myself. But then again, I did not have that knowledge before. And by now, with the later diagnosis, I've basically already proven myself that I can pretty much just do whatever I want to do if I put my mind to it and if I figure out a way to make it work. I can reach my goals one way or another if I really want to. But I've already proven that to myself time and again because I did push myself to it. And I don't know if I would have been able to push myself as much as I did if I would have had a diagnosis. And that's something that we are never going to know, of course. Maybe just to me pushing myself to do things is something that's ingrained in me and would have been there just as much if I would have had that diagnosis. I would have wanted to prove, hey, I can do this even with this diagnosis. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know. <laughs> that's, that's the main point of it. I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know if I would have wanted my diagnosis earlier. I... I don't know. It, there are both pros and cons to it. I do feel like in a lot of cases maybe life would have been a little bit easier. On the other hand, that probably is the reason that I didn't get the diagnosis earlier, right? There probably is a reason for it. <laughs> so, let me know. Are you dealing with neurodiversity? Are you not? Either yourself, maybe someone close to you? I would really like to hear your experience. Also, if you want me to dive a little bit deeper on anything regarding this topic, maybe overstimulation or changes or whatever, let me know and I'll see if I can maybe do that for you if you are interested in hearing my part of that story, I guess. For now, I wish you a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!